Hi, I'm Mike Keller. And I'm Dave D. And this is XP Deus Team USA. Here it is. Yes. 1868 Indian. The day strikes again. <laughs> What a hand. I'm shaking so bad right now. Dude, I cannot believe this. Love the energy and excitement. More on Matt Howell and his great find in a moment. Hi, I'm Mike Counter, along with Dave D and Steve Gropp, and welcome to the XP Deus Team USA Metal Detecting Show. We feature the Deus Metal Detector, just one of the great products produced by XP in France. We are on the beautiful campus of St. Norbert College in De Pere, Wisconsin, a nationally ranked college. And Dave, it's detecting season in America's Dairyland. It has been great to finally get out. Winter's gone and metal detect. Mike, it's warm, the ground is soft, and that's the way I like it. We've had some great finds this month. Why don't you go ahead and show us your finds? Sure, Mike. Everybody knows about my field of dreams. And as you can see here, I found a massive six inch skeleton key, and I would love to find the lock that this thing fit. And you notice it's in two parts here. This part was found a week later, about 50 yards away. So now I have one complete key, which is pretty cool. And as you see here, I have a dog tax from 1891 to 1892. And that was the second year that they issued dog tax here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And yesterday I was out in a park and I hit a sled hill with my high frequency coil. And I latched onto my first gold ring. It's a 14 karat white gold wedding band. So Mike, any keepers for you this month? Well, Dave, I did find some keepers. This belt buckle was from 1920, silver plated, has the N insignia on it, very good condition. I found this 1983 British one pound coin, not something you find in America a lot. 1983, ironically, was the first year this coin with Queen Elizabeth II on it was produced. I found an 1864 Civil War token and a silver quarter, so all in all, a pretty good month. So Mike, you got about 30 hours invested in using the XP Deus, you've read Andy Savage's book. You've watched all of Gary Blackwell's videos, and you've gotten a lot of tips from XP Deus users around the country. How do, you, how do you look at yourself now, and how do you feel about the XP Deus, and how has that transition from going from a newbie to an intermediate guy? Well, after all the things you just mentioned, I'm a master now. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm still learning the machine. You know. When you go out with any metal detector, it takes time. They say, what, about 100 hours to master, sure. or at least really feel comfortable with it? I'm not there yet, but as we showed earlier, I'm starting to find some really good items. I'm, I'm getting more comfortable. I'm listening to the sounds and not paying as close attention to the numbers, and I'm trying different programs. I'm trying to learn the detector and what it can do, and this machine can do a lot. And your confidence level is boosted. Going up every time I go out. Great to hear. Speaking of great finds, we started the show off with Matt Howell from Virginia, who had a remarkable find. Based on Matt's excitement, you knew it was special. Take a look at what Matt was so pumped up about. I just dug my first gold coin. I cannot believe this. We just switched places. This is unreal. I think second, maybe third hole at this. Dude, look at that. That's a two and a half dollar gold coin. Whoa, oh my God, oh my God, how, dude, it's so heavy, oh my God, oh look at that, what in the world, oh my God, that is a two and a half dollar gold coin. Oh, wow, I do, I am so sorry for anybody looking at this and I'm shaking so bad. Dave, what a find. Oh man, and he thought it was a two and a half dollar coin, but when he actually cleaned it up, it turned out to be a five dollar coin. Every metal detector is dream right there, no question about it. And if you're wondering what settings Matt was using on his dais when he pulled that gold coin out of the ground, well, we asked him to fill us in. Hey Mike, hey David. I just 
wanted to give you guys a little uh, insight as to what program I was using and um, what was going through my mind when I found that coin. So first of all, I was hunting a brand new farm field I'd never been into. So when I get into a, a place like that and I'm really just looking for something new, uh, trying to scout out a place, which basically I was doing that day, I like to use my own custom hot program. A lot of people are familiar with Gary's hot program, but I like to modify it for my personal taste. That day I was using the uh, standard nine inch coil. I was running, uh, I was running it, uh, my discrimination I run at one. I like a little bit of discrimination just to knock out some of the chatter. My sensitivity I was running at 93. My frequency on the hot program I was running at 11.7. For me, that's a good transitional uh, frequency. So I'm not going after real small stuff, but I still get a little bit more depth. Iron volume, using such low discrimination, the iron volume to me didn't matter. My reactivity was 2.5. I like that, that 2.5 over the two or the three, especially if I don't know if I'm gonna bump into some iron or if I'm gonna be in an open field to get a little more depth. Uh, audio response is, I had set at three that day, and my um, transmit power was set at two for, the, for one of the expert settings. Um, it's a pretty straightforward program, not too edited off of Gary's setup, but more suited to my own needs. The coin itself, I was hunting in a, in a field, my first two targets were pieces of aluminum, and the coin itself rang a solid 77, repeatable, maybe three to four inches down. As you guys know, the rest is, what they say is, the rest is history. So, thanks for, uh, for uh, reaching out to me. Uh, thanks for the great work you guys do. And be sure to follow Matt on his YouTube channel, Gone Diggin. It's been a great month. XP Deus Team USA members from across the U.S. and the world, for that matter, have been recovering some remarkable items. Here's a look at some of them in this edition of Deus Dandies. What can you say, Dave? Some great finds. They sure are. And I just wanted to thank everybody who contributed to sending in their Deus Dandies. You make the show, and this is what it's all about. Great point. The show is about you, not us. We're focusing on the Deus users, and that's what this baby's all about. On the last show, we promised our YouTube and Facebook subscribers that we would be giving some things away. Well, it's safe to say the show is off to a great start. We have close to 4,000 followers on our XP Deus Team USA Facebook page and almost 2,500 subscribers to our YouTube channel after one month. Dave, we hope to grow it even more. Right, and when you're in there and, and watching our videos, there is a little bell right next to the subscribe button. First, make sure you subscribe. Click on the bell and you will get a notification of when our next show is. So anything we do on our XP Deus Team USA YouTube channel, if they're on that bell, if they click that bell, they'll get notified. You got it, Mike. 
XP is so excited about the show, they sent us some items to give away, starting with this program. We have a contest that was created by Gary Blackwell from XP Deus. For a teaser, let's check in with Gary over in the UK. It's time for a technical competition now. At the end of the show, I'm going to give you an incomplete Deus program. What I'd like you to do is put it into your Deus and tweak it and get the best out of it and post your programs on the XP Deus Team USA Facebook page. You'll never know, there might be a prize in it for you. So wait till the end of the program and I'll give you the settings. All right, Dave, everyone's wondering, what's the prize? Oh, it's a great prize. It's an all expense paid trip to England. You get to sleep on Gary Blackwell's couch and Gary Cook, he'll be bringing the beer. So Gary Cook's providing the beer, Blackwell's providing the food and all the travel expenses. You can't beat that. Is that really the prize? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, the prize is right here behind me, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah, save it for a little bit later in the show. When you find that special permission to detect, it can lead to days upon days of successful hunting, and sometimes, depending on the site size, years of pure enjoyment. I caught up with one such lucky Deus user. His name is Nate Nigren, and he scored some impressive finds at what used to be an old golf course. It's a great machine. Nate Nigren of Appleton, Wisconsin, has been metal detecting roughly six years and has had a number of remarkable finds. So all of these coins were found with the Deus. The 41-year-old Nigren, a software developer, picked up the hobby from his father, John, who at 70 also swings the Deus, and he too has unearthed some great finds. So I started out with the, uh, the basic programs, went out to a park and found a two-cent piece. Um, and that was fantastic. I fell in love with the machine right then and there. But then I got on YouTube and saw somebody talking about Gary's Hot program. And that was about four years ago. I've been, before it was officially in, in the uh, software. And it's amazing. As far as the depth and the reactivity and using full tones. Tell me about the watch. Yeah, the watch, actually I was able to uh, get a date. I found that out in this field and it's got the serial number in there. Um, there's a couple serial numbers. You can see all the, uh, the windings are still in there. Unfortunately, the face was not intact when I dug this up, but it's a nice gold watch from uh, 1886 if memory serves. Most of Nigren's finds you see here have come from one place. So this was a golf course starting back in 1898 and interestingly enough one of the first coins I dug out of this area here was a, a barber quarter from that year in pristine condition. It must have been dropped the year that this was open as a golf course. In this field with this detector, I remember we were pulling out five or six you know, silver dimes or quarters a day. Location is key, and so is learning your dais. Nigren said read the manual, watch Gary Blackwell's skill school videos, and don't be afraid to experiment when you get a handle on how your dais works. And it's barely there. One tip I found, if you find a target and you can swing back and forth fast over it, you might get that tone to increase in volume. Another thing you can do is go into your menu, hit the down arrow until you get your uh, sensitivity, bump that up. There we go. It's there both ways, I'm going after it. The menu navigation is the thing that you're going to want to pick up first. And don't be intimidated by it because the greatest thing about it is you can mess around with all the settings and if you think you messed something up and don't like where it's at, just simply shut it off. It doesn't save it until you tell it to save it. Nigren has found some float yeah, copper and copper culture tools. You know, when I first pulled out my first two cent piece, I thought, man, that's so unique. I've never seen one of those before and I'll never find one again. 
Well, with the day use, I've pulled five out. And they're all from the 1860s. Fantastic coins, just gorgeous. I love seeing those come out. The oldest coin that I found with the day use, and this was a good, I want to say it was 13, 14, maybe even 15 inches down. You won't see a lot of detail in there, but it is an 1806 half cent. And it's pretty worn. I'm sure it's received a lot of pesticides over the years. But uh, in Wisconsin, that's a pretty amazing find. I traveled to the Hawkeye State to meet up with R.C. Dunn and Lenny Quellen, both diehard Deus users who have their own methods for pulling treasure out of the ground. Now, where they work might have something to do with their luck, but truth be known, Dunn and Quellen really know what they're doing with the Deus. Take a look. We broadcast nine races a night. Both R.C. Dunn and Lenny Quellen work at Prairie Meadows Racetrack and Casino in Altoona, Iowa. Dunn is a TV producer and Quellen is a camera operator. In their spare time, they both try and hit the jackpot with the help from their XP Deus. So from my left shoulder is East High School, one of the oldest high schools west of the Mississippi. And uh, because of you know being a high school, there's a lot of clad and a lot of uh, copper pennies. So we notched out copper, uh, we lowered our sensitivity, and uh, allowed me to find one of my, or the first find of my dais, which was a uh, ROTC Air Force badge, hat badge, that uh, is still holds a special place in my collection. Dunn has been using the dais for two years, and one of his keys to success is knowing what to look for before investing time hunting fields or urban areas. Here's a couple examples. Uh, we do a lot of hunting out here. This is probably one of our favorite locations. This is where we found a lot of stuff. This used to be a coal mining town. And when we go out and do some old plat map research, we always want to come out and scout because there's certain things you want to look for in a farm field. And here's a perfect example. Out here in the middle of the farm field, we've got old glass, we got old ceramic, old pottery, and we got brick, you name it. So you know that there was civilization out here that when they raised the houses, there's still a lot of stuff out there. And we've pulled halves and tokens and a little bit of everything out here. Well, one of our telltale signs of an area that is, could be ripe for finding historical artifacts or, or changes, areas that still have the brick paving stones for sidewalks. Um, this, you can definitely date an area and uh, you can, I mean, right on both sides of the sidewalk, you should find a lot of silver coins and uh, a lot of other artifacts. So this is uh, when we drive through areas that we have permissions, we definitely look for areas that still have brick sidewalks. Lenny Quellen has been detecting for over 40 years, the past three with the dais. He likes to adjust his dais on the fly to get maximum results. Oh, there's tons of features you can use in the field after you start looking after a couple minutes. Today, I actually had to turn the sensitivity down because all the shallow targets were just so loud. And here I don't want to dig clad money that has been dropped in the last 40 years. I want to try to hit something deeper like the old silver or some uh, Indian heads or, or uh, even buffalo head nickels. So I actually turned the sensitivity down to 88 off of 9192. And I also increased the audio response. So I can definitely tell a shallow target from a deep target. For many days users, the hot program is the way to go. Lenny says, don't be afraid to try the pitch program as well. Um, I like the pitch tones. I just seem to catch that high squeak around all the iron around the old houses, the front stoops and the front sidewalks. When you're in a, a really iron infested uh, situation, switch it to the pitch and try that. So Dave, how was the trip? Oh, the trip was great. I got uh, some really good tips from Lenny and RC and I definitely want to go back. Well, one thing they mentioned, the pitch program, I should also mention that Gary Blackwell just came out with a new video recently about the pitch program. Make sure you check that out on his XP Deus Skills School. High frequency coils made by XP. Many people ask, which is the best one? The nine inch round or the elliptical? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each coil? Let's check in with Gary Blackwell from XP Deus Skills School to find out more. Let's start with the round coil. It uses three different frequencies but in between each frequency you've got seven offsets whereas the black coil had three offsets 
This tops out at about 50 something kilohertz. The elliptical tops out at 80 kilohertz. So this is a lot higher frequency. Now, because it's round, you get a much bigger footprint. So you've got a bigger search area, possibly a little bit more depth on certain size targets. But as a rule, this search coil is probably best for more general searching. It goes down to 14 kilohertz as well, which is probably my choice for wet conditions. I'd, I like to use the lower frequency if the conditions are a little bit wet. Now let's switch over to the elliptical coil because this is the one that gets people's interest. Because of its shape and size, it can winkle in between trash. Here in the UK, we've got the Thames foreshore, which is littered with trash, but there's good targets nestling in between it. And the guys who search on the foreshore absolutely love this search coil. So how can we convert that to the USA? Well, you guys know you've got cellar holes, which are equally as trashy. You've got parks that are trashy, various other places. So it's up to you guys to really have a think and think where would this be best applied? Also, if there's high mineralization in the soil, the elliptical coil has got a smaller footprint, so it sees a lot less of the soil, and this makes finding small targets such as gold nuggets, coins on edge, a lot easier in highly contaminated soil. Magnetic soil. And depth. People often ask, which is the deepest out of the HF coils? Well, that's a bit of a difficult question because Let's take a small target, a very small target, a coin on edge, for example. You might not get that using the 50 kilohertz round coil, but you will get it using 80 kilohertz on the elliptical coil. So it's not so much a case of depth, it's will you find or miss a target. The elliptical coil is the lightest coil in the range. It's really easy to maneuver. So going back to what is the best coil, Honestly guys, it's personal choice. You need to find the coil which suits your search environment and your particular targets. Personally, I tend to use the round coil for most of my search scenarios, but if I get a little hot spot, this elliptical coil is an absolute killer. And let's not forget, we all want to have the latest must have accessory. And this elliptical coil is the Gucci coil of metal detectors. A couple of Blackwell's friends in the UK, Gary Cook and Steve Murdy, use different coils and programs when detecting with the dais. Check out this demonstration as Cook uses the 9-inch round high-frequency coil. Well, I'm getting a rubbish signal in the 90s, Gary. Let's see what you get. Well, I'm getting... I'm sure you can pick that up. A nice, thick, reasonably. That's it, 54 you get any iron kilohertz. So I'll, and I'm getting a 76 on the reading. Are you getting any iron edge on it at all? Not that I can, can see, but I've lowered it to 28. Still getting a, what I would class, oh, I don't know, it's a little bit broken at that angle. If I lower that back down, if we can see one more down to 14, now it's now it's broken. Right, okay. And what, that's on what big Not so bad that way, but that angle, so got now it's broken, as you can hear. So straight, whack that straight back up to 54. Cleared it up a bit, so. Hmm. Well, well, let's dig it out and see what we can find. Dig it out, mate, and see so what. So mine you was think. saying probably iron, and yours on the high frequency was saying it was a good signal. On the lower frequencies, it was it was. I'm picking you up. A scratchy signal, but on the higher frequencies, it was clearing up the signal quite a lot. Okay. So the only way to really find out. We'll try it with an air test as well in a second to get the lump out, and if it's still in the hole. Oh, it's out. No, it's definitely saying iron to me. Do you want to try it again? Yeah. 
I'm still on 54, so... It sounds good on yours. Now, let's... Oh, let you do the honours, John. It's your... It's your... Go ahead. If you don't mind me digging it. Now, this will show you how good the high frequency coils are. Because that's a Roman coin. Right. Split Roman coin. So Higher frequencies thing. with the high frequency coil yep. will clear up the signals on a signal that can come through as a bit scratchy on the lower frequency coil. The higher frequency coil is just proved if you turn up the frequencies on an unsure signal, look what you can miss. And that's three signals in a row that I wouldn't have normally done because I thought they were iron. Uh, two Roman coins and one button. Yeah. And now, it would hole. have been interesting if the high frequency coil had tried those other two signals, if we would have got the same result. And I'm pretty certain we would have done. We'll do that on the next one. Like I say, it is a learning curve. And we are learning all the time. I've been telling you for months, get one of these. I'm saving. <laughs> I don't know, but I've had signals like this before, and it depends on, you know, different angles, things are lying in the ground, and different angles that you, you're picking it up, but there's definitely something in there that is telling me to dig, so I'm going to have a dig out, and let's have a look and see what we've got. That's cleared up a bit. Sometimes you see getting it out of the ground and giving, getting a bit closer to the surface can actually give you a slightly better signal. And I think if you zoom in, I can see it without the pinpointer. Do you see that there? I'll pinpoint it for you just to show you. There we go. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that looks like a Roman brooch. Take some soil off of it. Very gently. And there is a Roman brooch. Complete with pin. As you can see, just missing the catch plate at the end. And sometimes they would break those on purpose and it would be an offering and they would snap the brooch to basically make it as an offering to the gods. And the reason why they snap them is it would release the power of the brooch or release the power of, of what you were praying for. And it would also mean that it couldn't be used again. Hence why they would break it. You sometimes find buried swords which have been snapped in half and things and it's basically to uh to release the power of, of, of whatever you're praying for and it stops other people from reusing it but there you go spring and there you go roman brooch that is a real quiet signal and how many people would not hear it or walk past it ignore it and, and not even give it the time of day. But those quiet signals, the ones that are very minute, it's telling you that there's a signal there. So don't ignore it because there is, a, it doesn't matter if it's quiet, it's a, it's a signal. Take out some of the soil on the t and it will clear the signal up. Objects, especially like a Roman brooch, because there's lots of different angles protruding from a Roman brooch, you've got thin bits, you've got the end bit, you've got the thick bit, you know, you've got the spring end, which is thicker. And depending on the angle that it's in the ground, determines what you're hearing on your headphones and determines what your how the dais picks it up. So my advice to be a scratchy signal, don't ignore it. You know, certainly if don't dig on numbers because that is really gonna it can mess with your head digging on numbers. Because if you look at it and say, oh, 
it's 33, it's going to be rubbish. That brooch came out in, in, at 33 on my machine because at a certain angle in the ground, that's what they can do because of the protruding little bits of bronze. So always check it at different angles. So different angles. And if you're still not sure, if you're using a high frequency coil and you've got the options of changing through the different frequencies. So if you turn up from 14 kilohertz to 28, which is what I've just done now, as you can see, all of a sudden that signal comes alive. On 14 kilohertz, it was there, but in normal detecting conditions, you could have missed it. By the way, Gary Cook, who you just saw in the video, has a new blog out on the XP Deus website. It's XP Adventures, Cookie's XP Deus blog. Make sure you go on and subscribe. Dave, what else is new at XP? Well, the all new research and development building is just about complete. And this building is gonna include test pits with soils from around the world. Interesting. Sonia Harshman of Indiana sent us a couple of quick Deus tips. One has to do with EMI, and the other focuses on adjustments you can make while detecting in the fields. Hi guys, I thought I'd share a couple of quick tips today. First off, if you're ever out detecting and you run into EMI interference, try this. Go into your settings and change your sensitivity. Lower it two or three bars. Then also, go into your frequency and change that, and that should take care of the problem. If it continues to be chatty, go into your expert mode and change that down and see how that works. And if you're a field hunter like I am and you don't want to miss those deep targets that come across as a whisper, go into your menu and change your audio response to four or even five. That way those deep sounding targets will come through loud and clear. We begin a new segment on this show called Ask Gary. Detector has sent us a 15 second video question beginning with their name and where they're from. We turned around and sent those questions over to Gary Blackwell from XP and he responded via video. Let's take a look. Here's Ask Gary. Hello Gary, my name is William Caps, AKA Willie Diggett in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina area. I have a question about the feedback that I get from the electric fences that I hunt in these farm fields. What is your best recommendations that I can do to eliminate the false signals and false readings that I get from these electric fences? Thanks, Gary. Hi, Willie. Thanks for your question. Electric fences, man, they're a nightmare. There's nothing you can do about them. Detecting around electric fences has never been easy because the electric fences give off a pulse, and there's no way of getting around the pulse, I'm afraid. It's just one of those things. But happy hunting and be lucky. Hi Gary, it's Justin from the Netherlands. I recently picked up a Deus with a remote control and a pinpointer MI6. Um, and connecting the remote control with the pinpointer, I have noticed the vibration is not working. Um, is that correct? And if correct, can it be enabled with a future update or something? Thank you. Hi Justin, thanks for your video question. XP have deliberately not put the vibrate on the MI6 pinpoint probe when it's radio linked to the DAIS simply because it puts too much drain on the battery so we've decided not to have the vibrate feature on it but thanks for your question and see you soon Hi Gary, Keith Brown from Dorset UK When detecting in iron infested fields using HOT what adjustments can be made to reduce the iron sound while still maintaining good depth and finding high value targets. Cheers. Hi Keith, thanks for sending in your video. When using the HOT program, you're using minus 6.4 discrimination. Now that lets everything through, including the ground. To eliminate the ground, all you have to do is turn your discrimination up from minus 6.4 to minus two, and that'll eliminate all the sound from the ground, or should I say feedback. If you didn't want to hear the feedback from the iron, you can go a little bit further. You can turn your discrimination all the way up to five, for example, and that will eliminate most iron and give you a quiet operation in the full tones. Personally, I like to use minus 6.4 discrimination to let all the feedback through ground and iron as a low tone. 
So I'm getting a good feeling for the ground. I'm, I'm being interactive with the machine. But it's up to you, for sure. Change the settings to suit what you want to hear. Back to you guys in the studio. Dave, some really good questions. And they were. And keep them coming. All we need is your name, where you're from, and a 15-second question for Gary. And send them to xpdteamusa at gmail.com. There's nothing quite like getting an XPDS delivered to your home and opening it for the very first time. XPDS Team USA member Steve Gropp recently unboxed his on video to share his excitement like Christmas all over again for Steve. Take a look. Thanks, Mike. You know, I've been detecting for about four years now and I've used various models and makes of detectors. Um, but it was time for an upgrade for me. So what I did was I went out and I researched and I got to use some different detectors and I had a mental checklist of some things that I definitely wanted for my new upgraded detector. What are those things? Well, I wanted the detector to be lightweight and portable. I wanted it to be technologically advanced but also easy enough to use right out of the box. And I wanted it to be powerful and fast. That's what we, we all want for our detectors. I decided, of course, on the XP Deus. And guys, I just got it in today. I ordered it a little while ago and it came. So let's look inside. All right, what I'm noticing right away, I've got um, a bag full of some of the accessories that come along with it. Of course, I'm gonna wanna look at the user manual so I know how to set it up and use it correctly. But I'm not anticipating a whole lot of trouble using this and I don't think you should either. So one of my checkpoints was lightness. And I'm telling you right now, the, uh, the S stem, which is what this is called, as you can see, it's shaped like an S. It really fills that bill because it is extremely light, but I can also tell that it's also extremely durable. So I'm excited to use this. It's got a telescopic, it's got a telescopic stem, as you can see. So it checks the portability box for me as well. I can tell right now I'm gonna be able to put this in like a medium sized bag anytime I go traveling. So very excited about that. Let's check out the coil. So I went with not the standard nine inch coil, I went with the high frequency coil. Really excited about using this. Ordered the standard coil as well, so I'll be using that too. But I can't wait to see what this brings out for me as well. So guys, this is the heart and soul of the XP Deus right here. This is the remote control unit, which attaches to, of course, the stem. Now, what I really love about this is that everything is wirelessly integrated. And what do I mean by that? Well, as you can tell, aside from this right here, there are no wires on the entire unit. That means I'm gonna be able to charge it, use it without worrying about any kind of wires. Charging it, lithium batteries in each component, meaning in the coil, in the remote control unit, and in the headphones that come along with this. So right here I opted for the smaller headphone uni unit. You can always get the bigger ones that have the over the ear cups, but this is the small one and what is great about this is it works just the same as the remote control unit. Now what does that mean? Well, it starts to rain. I can take the remote contr control unit off, put it in my pocket, put it in my vehicle. I can use the headphones which are also waterproof, which is really nice. If I want, I can also take the unit off the headphones itself there's a wristband accessory that you can use. You can wear it on there as well. It's just amazing to me all the technology, all the portability, all the functionality, and how integrated everything is, and the fact that it is wireless. One last thing, I can't forget this. I also splurged and went with the pin pointer. This is something that we all know we need when we go out metal detecting. It's great to have a great detector, but when you're right down there in the hole, you wanna be able to find that coin or that relic very fast. I went with the MI6. The great thing about this, and it's beautiful, I mean, I can't believe I'm actually holding it right now, to be honest with you. It's nice, bright XP red which is gonna be easy to see if I drop it or if I, you know, if it's next to the hole and I forget it, I walk away, turn back, look around, it's right there. But if I actually do lose it, one awesome thing about this is I mentioned integration. This is integrated with the remote control unit as well. And that means if I do actually lose this, it's gonna go into sleep mode, be able to use the remote control unit and I'll be able to find this with that. I can't wait to put this together and get out this weekend and use this. I plan on making some videos um, showing 
how I do with this for the first time out so that you guys can kind of take that journey with me because I'm brand new to the dais. So if you're, if you're new to the dais or if you're thinking about getting a dais, send me an email to xbdteamusa at gmail.com. Ask me some questions about how I went about choosing this particular model. If you've been using the dais for a while and you want to ask a question, make sure you send in some videos to the Ask Gary segment a brief uh, video question asking him something and he'll be able to answer that on a future episode. So guys, I'm gonna put this together and I'm gonna get out detecting. I hope you guys all have fun detecting too and use your dais. Thanks Steve, that was great. I could really tell you're excited about getting your dais. And Dave, Steve's been out already and found some quality relics. Yeah, the dais is a big upgrade for Steve. He's gonna really enjoy this machine and I'm really looking forward to seeing his finds over the course of the summer. When we can, we try and throw a little humor into the show. It's healthy to laugh. From time to time, we'll get our giggles from Deus user Todd Roy, a comedian from Los Angeles. In the latest installment, Roy strikes it rich in the Arizona desert. Or does he? Hello, XP Deus Team USA. Todd here. Again, this time I'm in the Arizona desert looking for a ghost town called Winchester. It's somewhere around here. I'm not quite sure where, but I hope that I'll be finding it soon and then I can do some metal detecting. I'm not very good at this, but that hasn't stopped me. But anyways, if they can find this place 150 years ago, then I should be able to find it today. It's somewhere here in the middle of the Arizona desert. I'm just not 100% sure exactly where, but I wanted to document this particular point in the destination to let you know it was not easy to find. All right, so I have found a structure, and uh, this was probably built around 1900, maybe 1890. So, haven't really kept it up much, but it is a structure, and I believe the rest of the town is up that way. I'm not exactly sure 100% what this structure was, but there is a window right here, so this could have been an early drive-through. Perhaps the stage coaches or horses came up to this window right here, placed their order, you know? Hello, can I take your order? All right, maybe not. Uh, would you like rattlesnake burger or cactus pie? Rattlesnake burger? Okay, that's one rattlesnake burger, I am going one to cactus head pie. That way. You want cactus pie? I'll give you cactus pie. One cactus pie. I'm pretty sure this is not historically accurate. <laughs> Getting closer to a mine, I think. I think I found one. They never make it easy to get to these things, do they? Nope. Never make it easy, but right up here, I think I found one here. Take a look. All I have to do is figure out how to get up there. So I think this might be a possible path. Yeah, this will work. This is definitely a mine. And um, it goes far pretty back. Holy shit. And fuck, yeah, it's a, it's a dead animal. Look at that. Some sort of deer or something. Also, Mother Nature does not play around in this area. Look at that. It also smells like death inside of this tunnel. It's probably that, but also, it's got a bad feeling about this. So I'm gonna go find another place to metal detect. I'm gonna leave this place alone. I did a lot of metal detecting, believe it or not. I actually detected around this entire foundation. I detected around up there. But I didn't film it a lot. I was more focused on metal detecting. I did find a few things. Nothing uh, of value from an antiquities point of view. I found some shell casings. I found a money clip, actually, that had several hundred dollars in it. So I found that. These are new bills. So somebody was ATV up here with a bunch of money. And they dropped that. So <laughs> I found this. So that was cool but it wasn't an antique. I did not come up here thinking I'd find several hundred dollars in cash, but I did. I am learning how to metal detect. I'm actually better at it 
I didn't dig up any nails this time, but a few of the targets did give me some confusion. And the money clip one, actually, it wasn't really that hard to dig either. I just moved the dirt away. There it was. In the meantime, I think I left a GoPro up there. So I got to go back up and get it. Dave, I could go for some cactus pie right about now. A beer and a rattlesnake burger will just, will just hit the spot. It really sounds good, doesn't it? Okay, earlier in the show, Gary Blackwell teased us with a technical competition and an opportunity to win a prize. Let's go back to Gary now and see what the competition is all about. Earlier on in the show, I mentioned the competition. Well, here it is. This program is slightly different. It's a reverse tone program. High tone is iron, low tone is a good target. So remember, high, bad, low, good. The reason why I've done this is because a lot of people have lost the high tonal range to their hearing. It may be old age, it may be work related. So ladies, when you're screaming at your old man like a banshee, he might not be ignoring you. It might just be a case of he's lost that tonal range to his hearing. We can cut that bit, Stuart. Okay, here's the program. Start off with Deus Fast, number three. Go to disc, go to expert, change it to two tones. Now the first tone is 202, that's iron. I want you to raise it up into the 900s. Drop it down to the other tone, which is five something. Drop that down to about 220, whatever you're comfortable with. So as long as you've completely reversed them two tones, that's all that matters. Go back, back, back into the detect screen. Go to iron volume. Drop the iron volume down to one. Now that's all I'm giving you. You need to tweak this program to suit your sites and post your program up on the XP Deus Team USA Facebook page. You never know, there might be a prize in it for the best program. Don't forget to give it a cool name as well. Back to you guys in the studio. Again, post your program on the XP Deus Team USA Facebook page. The winner will be chosen by Gary. Dave, what will the lucky person win? Well, I hope everybody's not disappointed that they won't be able to have that sleepover at Gary's house. I'm sure Gary is. <laughs> but the real prize is right here, and that is a MI4 pinpointer from XP Deus. Thanks for making the first month of the show special for all of us. What we've learned is people all over the world are tuning in and enjoying the show. We appreciate the support. We leave you with a couple of examples of international fellowship. Until next time, have fun metal detecting with your XP Deus. Hi Dave, Mike and uh, everyone at XP Deus Team USA. We really love the show. Keep up the good work. Best wishes from the guys at Team XP Romania.